So I've learned quite a few different languages through my 20 years as an expert HTML programmer. And during these 20 years, I've kind of developed like a roadmap to learn new languages. And I wanted to take the time to show you how I do that. Because when I first started out, I didn't really have like a direction. Uh, but as I started learning and I started getting more proficient, I kind of developed my own little bit of a pattern. Now, the thing is, is this video is strictly meant for someone not learning their first language. This is really a second and beyond language, and not all languages will really work this way. So I can imagine that if you're learning JavaScript and you want to learn Haskell, this pattern may not 100% line up just because Haskell is such a different language from JavaScript. So the first of three steps that I have is the exploration slash documentation phase. Now this may take you a little bit depending on your kind of programming chops, but it's a really simple process. So practically speaking, what that means is going to advent of code and starting to solve problems. And why I choose this is a couple reasons. Uh, first off, you'll notice right here is that this should be in a file. You have to read from a file system. If you don't know, file fa reading can fail. Therefore, there's gonna be errors. So it gives me a chance to understand how errors work in the system, how string processing works in the system, if, while, iterator, structures, enums, kind of like, it just gives me a good overview of the language and what tools are really available for me to be able to solve problems in. It also gives me a chance to look at how they handle null and undefined because in Rust, it's going to be an option, whereas in TypeScript, it's going to be null or undefined. And so they're like very different ways you handle it. Pattern matching if statements, right? Like they're just, it's totally different. It gives you kind of a good overview. And every time you run into something you don't understand, you go, you look it up in the documentation, you read about it. That way you kind of just learn by doing. And I think that's a very important point. I am not somebody, and I doubt you are either, someone that can just read through pages upon pages of what the language does, and then boom, look at that. I can program because I'm amazing at it. No, that's just usually not how it works. Usually we learn with our hands more than we learn with our eyes, and we just go in there and we have to kind of program through a bunch of problems to pick everything up. The second reason why I really love Advent of Code, which I strongly suggest you do this, is that there's a bunch of problems here, right? I only go so far in Advent of Code, okay? I don't like to go all the way up. It gets very tedious. But as you go through this, tons of people have either solved the problem or are going to solve it with you. So you can actually like ask questions. You can bounce answers off of. You can code review other people's solutions. People write blogs about it. There's just a lot of available information about solving these problems specifically in the language you're looking for. So you'll get like just a bunch of experience right away. So the second one I like to do is a WebSocket server. I think this is super important and I really, really enjoy kind of this phase of the learning process because I usually build something super simple. A chat room client that takes connections, someone says join and a string, someone says leave and the string, or they send message string, which is the room of the or the name of the room, and then the message they want to send to everyone in that room. It gives me the ability to hold on to sockets. How do we do sockets? What does the API or the standard actually provide to you in here versus what kind of third-party libraries are there out there really gives you a good idea of what the ecosystem is how modules work in the language and the best part which is how does it handle async is there primitives around it do you just have to use threads like how do you actually work with async in the language then my third goal is usually to build like a larger project something that's going to make me exercise a lot of patterns and try to build something that has to maintain itself with lots of lines of code. Because often you'll start finding weird chinks in the armor, how how memory is stored, how the you know the borrow checker works, how how bad are your ideas around it, right? It has to get to a certain level before you can really feel the language out. And so for the third one, I really like a good project. And so for my recent kind of endeavors into Zig, I've chosen to build out an interpreter, this interpreter right here, fantastic book, Thorsten Paul. But why I chose that is that I'm actually gonna build the interpreter in TypeScript, then in Rust, and then finally in Zig. So I can actually use the experience from languages that I'm good at into a language that I am bad at. And I can try to draw similarities, draw differences, how Zig changes its handling of various things. So let me actually give you kind of a good example of that. If you're familiar with TypeScript, building Alexa means you're gonna come across all these tokens and you kind of have to create these little tokens. So I have to define the token. I'm gonna go in here and based on all these different conditions, I'll return a token. And at the end, I also then have to check for these more programmatic cases because there's not a, there's not a way you can express this all in one statement unless if you only use if and else's. 
Whereas with Rust, you can do a match statement in which I can express all these different things simply in the statement. Like, look at this. Hey, if it matches this statement, I will then go through my identifier process. Whereas in TypeScript, that's just a function that's really doing the exact same thing. And the cool part is Zig actually has something very, very similar to it. You'll notice right here, I can do almost the same thing I do in Rust. So I kind of get this cool parts of Rust and Zig, whereas I get more of the ease of handling of TypeScript. So kind of like a really cool, interesting middle ground language. And usually by the time I'm done with the project, I have a pretty strong grasp. For me to really know if I like a language, I really do just have to build a few things. And if you don't build a few things, it's really hard to know how the language actually feels. A lot of ideas seem great on paper, but until you build something sufficiently large, they're just ideas. They're not actually concrete. You don't actually know if they're good. They're just whiteboard. And so that's it. That's how I just go about learning languages. I'm going to apply this exact same principle here soon on Twitch with OCaml once I get done building out the interpreter in these three languages. And then I'll see, can I still keep applying it even in languages that are very far outside of the languages I know? OCaml being closest to Rust, but a very functional, very different language. My guess is yes, it should not be that hard. Looking forward to it. Pretty dang excited about it. Oh, I actually forgot the fourth step. The fourth step, of course, is to press the like and subscribe. You know, it just works. It makes you better. I don't know why. The name is the Primogen.